our network webinar for March. Welcome everyone, so excited to be with you today. This is our third installment for the year. Look how fast the year is going, we're already in March 2021. So good, good to have you here. Can we get a sense of where people are dialing in from? My name is Oni Bayode. I'm dialing in from Nairobi today. Um, so it's actually evening my time, it's 7 p.m. I know we have people from all over the world, um, different parts of the world. Um, so if we can just get in the chat for those who are in already, where you're dialing in from, um, and I'll just get into it. Um, so today our topic, um, welcome Adenike from, from UK, <laughs> PN as we like to call her. Um, today is uh, our topic of business essentials, practical, strategic, and financial insights. Quite a mouthful, um, but a very important topic. And I think the two key words there will be essentials, as in they are important, you need them, you cannot do without the insights you'll be getting today, and practical, meaning you can actually start using them from tomorrow or today if you so wish, right? And um, we have a fantastic panel, I'm really excited. It's a powerhouse um, this evening, Efe Okala, founder of Impactor, welcome, and Bola Udina, uh, business operations strategist at MBA Growth Partners. So welcome, welcome. I want to hear, I, I'm looking at the chat, where, you, where, we, where do we have people dialing in from um, today? Um, so EPR, Women's Professional Network, I think if I just start off with EPR Global as a whole, uh, EPR Global really is uh, just a platform uh, where the vision is to empower, to develop, to connect female leaders. And that's why we have uh, forums such as this one, really where you get insights that should help you, develop you, um, em empower you, and also connect, connect you to female, other female leaders. Well, uh, that's Kemi, yeah? Kemi from Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, as, as the, the Women's Professional Network is a platform, and where you access tools, um, resources to, to deploy your gifts and talents in, in the marketplace. And our purpose is to build and empower um, women achieve their best um, in their professional and personal lives. Welcome Shola, Lagos, USA, UK, Kenya in the house. Yeah, multifaceted, we like that. Um, next slide. So I would want to encourage you to get comfortable. Um, you're here, so be present, right? Uh, make the most of this time, you're investing your time. So just grab water, if you're like me, grab a snack, any opportunity to eat and snack, so do that. Um, grab, grab a notepad, pen, you wanna jot down things so that you will remember and you can refer to it after this. Um, listen, uh, we really have some, some subject matter experts today, so you want to make the most of their time and of their insights. They've taken years to share, to get some of the insights they'll be sharing with you today, so you do wanna, want to, want to um, be ready to ask them questions. Um, we want to make the most of, the, of their time today, so please get ready for that. So I'll go into just introducing um, one of our speakers, Efe. Efe is the founder of Impactor and Impactor objective really is to bridge the financing gap or for female entrepreneurs. Um, she, if I put it in simple terms, she helps you get investor ready actually. I've seen her in action putting some power decks together for people who are about to pitch to investors and um, she's really great at what she does. She's an investment lawyer as well. Um, the work she does for Impactor has, I mean, a huge network where she's been able to train um, over 17,000 17, African female entrepreneurs across 15 con 52 con um, African countries on a pro bono basis. So she does this without charging these women a, a dime. So really some fantastic work um, that Efe, Efe really does. And she puts her heart and soul into it. Um, let me introduce uh, Bola. Bola is a subject matter expert um, in strategy, in marketing, 
in uh, operations. Um, so she really is a think tank, if you want to call it that, um, for this subject. And you really want to make the most of, of her brain power today. Um, some real experience that she's got here. Ideally, we should be paying these panelists for their time. So we're really grateful. We would possibly not be able to afford their hourly rate. So really grateful that they have uh, made the effort and the time to be with us this evening. Well, evening, my time, afternoon, your time probably, um, to make to just share with us the nuggets they have gathered over so many years um, of, of work. Next slide. Okay, I think I'll just go ahead. Um, Kemi is, as you all know, is um, the global lead for, for EPR Women's Professional Network. And really she's passionate about enabling individuals and organizations to execute on their vision and mission. Um, extensive years of experience in, in HR, in, in change management, in project management, in project execution across corporates and non nonprofit organizations. So really also fantastic to have you Kemi moderating for us today. I'll uh, hand over to you um, to run Thank us through you. the rest. Thank you Thanks. so much for that wonderful introduction and for welcoming our panelists today. Um, again, thank you to our awesome audience. Those of you who are listening now and who listen later, super, super excited to have you all today and to be here. This is one of the very you know, very important times of my of the month for me, where you know the third Saturday of the month. It's it's really exciting because we get to engage and to connect with you all. Today, super. You know, we have a very very um, interesting topic, right? That we'll be talking about today. And but before we go into the details, and we're gonna again, we're gonna have an opportunity to engage, to ask questions of our audience, um, of our speakers and panelists. We're gonna tap into those, their experiences, their brains, their, and, you know, learn how we can really get ourselves equipped to, um, to really um, be equipped to run our businesses effectively. I can imagine that we have a number of, you know, just full, it's quite a spectrum of, uh, you know, people in here, you know, that may, maybe you are, you run a business um, already, or you aspire to run a business or you, you know, you've been there for a while. So there might be that reason why you're here, but I want to really get a feel for who we have in the room. And we're going to do a quick poll in a minute just to get a feel. So, um, oh, I am going to, I'm going to run it again real quick. I think, um, let me relaunch the poll. I just want to make sure that I did it right. I think I had it on anyways. So let me do it. I'm going to relaunch it. Can you just do the poll real quick? And fill out the poll. Um, fill out the poll. What phase of business ownership are you in? What phase of business ownership are you in? I have not launched launched my business yet. Between three to five years. All right, I see more people are joining and I would love to kind of get a feel for who else. I don't think everybody has participated. Can you all see the poll? We have many more people that have part of, that are on. If you can join to participate in the poll, just answer the question, just pick one. What phase are you in? Have you not launched are you less than a year, between one or three years, three to five years? I'm sure you can fit into one of the categories here. All right, let me see the chat in case anybody's communicating with me here. All right, thank you, TT. Has everyone had a, has everyone had a chance to just choose, make a selection using the poll? All right, we might we might run it later when we have more people. We might run it again later because I think a lot of people are like, I'm still we're still waiting for some people to respond, but we'll keep going, um, and we can try this again later. All right, and I think what we have here so far, I think we have, um, <laughs> we have uh, just uh, a couple of people who have not launched their business, and we have just one person. Um, who 
has run who had who had between three to five years in business. So we'll see we'll see how that changes over time as we go through this session. But um, we'll just go ahead and start and continue in the interest of time. So very quickly, I am going to go forth and start engaging our audience to our, our speakers today. You know, when I think about this topic, um, you know, from a <laughs> business essentials perspective, you know, I think of it from the standpoint of you know. If you if you are thinking of doing anything major, um, aka running a business, and you don't have a strategy, meaning you don't have an action plan, you've not thought through it, you've not, you know, you've not even you've not put pen to paper on what are the key essentials of you know you being successful in the business to help you navigate through the business, then you're not, not really setting yourself up for success. And then you think about the financial aspect of it. I, as I reflected on it, I'm thinking, well. If you're trying to make money, you probably you, you bet it's best for you to really figure out how to manage that money. Otherwise, you have a hobby <laughs> and not a business. I love watching Shark, Shark Tank. It's one of my favorite shows. I don't watch a lot of TV. However, you know, I get it's really funny to me when um, when some of the contestants are told, "Well, you have a hobby and not a business." You know, based on you know whatever they they part they sh they show. But it's very enlightening because sometimes we are running hobbies because we are not really making money and we're not serious about it. So today is about let's take this thing serious. If you really want to run a business, how do we take it serious? So we have both Efe and Bala here. So I'm going to start off with a question um, for uh, with um, Efe. So if I do you um, let's let's start off with the question a question around um, you know when we think about businesses you know when you think about running business we talked about hey it may be a hobby or it may be a business or you know you need to take it seriously what are those challenges that people face you know especially when you're thinking of should I start a business should I not when what challenges also or stumbling blocks do you do you believe that people have when it comes to having a strategy or having that solid financial management that is required to run any kind of business, no matter how big or small it is. If I, over to you. Yeah, no, th thank you so much. And it's such a blessing to be here today. So thank you all for the opportunity to speak and to also speak with those wonderful women in the room. Um, I think one of the big things that I notice, even from like an earlier stages, you even trying to understand what problem you're trying to solve in the market. Um, people show up and say, hey, I want to start a business. And you sort of walk, say, walk me through it. Like, what do you want to do? Well, I hear hair is profitable. You know, a lot of women are wearing wigs, so I want to sell hair, right? Or I hear, I think there were other trending things. Drop shipping is great. So I'm just going to set up this website and maybe water bottles, because I watched a random video that said water bottles is shipping and all this stuff, but you're not taking a step back to understand your why, right? Why should they buy from you versus someone else? Like the same person, you know, that's talking about hair is the fastest moving good, let's say in the market. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at five different competitors in any market, you're gonna notice that the most serious ones have their edges. like what makes them different. Um, and one comes to mind actually, I think her name is Nika out of um, Maryland. I forget, hit free hair or something. Um, she does like, you know, um, what do you call it? The natural hair extensions, right? And there are lots of others that also have natural hair extensions. But when she came to the market, I noticed immediately that her product was different. I noticed that she actually tried to match the curl pattern with like, you know, real African and African women, um, African American, um, women's curl pattern, right? As opposed to what I had been seeing by other big competitors. So that told me that, yes, she was going into a business that maybe she saw it as a profitable business, but she took the time to research the market, find out the gaps in the market, and then try to figure out how whatever she's offering to people um, addresses those problems that she had noticed in the market. In this case in point, it was that the matching, the texture of this um, natural hair extensions were not as great and she set out to make them great. And obviously she's a name in the market now. She sells like hot cake. So the question is, how can you make sure you think through whatever you wanna invest in to make sure that whatever you put out there will sell like hot cake? I think like that is one of the biggest things that I have seen where people don't understand why they're offering a product besides I wanna make money, but then end up not making money. 
Wow. Wow. Understand your why. <laughs> Though, you know, what really makes you different, you know, take the time to do your research, understand the market, what are the gaps, you know, think through it, you know, and it's not something that you start overnight. It's one of, it's one of the things I'm, um, you know, that's uh, resonating with me and what you said. Thank you so much, Ife. You know, again, it's to me, it's almost like simmer. Hey, get excited about, you know, whatever the business is, but really delve, think through it so that you almost like count the costs before you move forward, if that makes sense. Well, yeah. I'm going to have, let me, let me sorry, go ahead. something <laughs> here too. Um, because this doesn't necessarily mean that you can get into a space that is already crowded, right? So I don't mm. want to mix up that message. So even right. if it's water bottles or it's even water, just find out your edge. Um, your there edge. is no space for everyone in the market, but you just have to figure out what makes me different. Right, right. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for expanding on that. Um, and, you know, we, we'll be back. There's some questions growing in my heart and <laughs> we're, we're coming back to you. So I'm going to I'm going to um, circle back to Bola now. When we think about, you know, being successful in a business, you know, and you think about so we've talked about knowing your edge. You're talking about uh, you've talked about um, basically knowing your why and everything. What are those critical skills when we talk about those tangible skills that are required for any business owner? And as you talk through that, one of the things uh, to give you context of, you know, one of the things that we focus on from an EPR perspective, we focus on you know, your, your passion, your vision, your purpose. How does that come into play in all of this? So knowing your edge, know what the gaps are and everything. So how does, you know, purpose, passion and all that, how does that align with everything? in that formula for success. Am I making sense? Oh yeah, no, it does. Um, okay, beautiful. <laughs> Hold on. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity to um, be here today and share my thoughts on, on this topic. Um, so the question is, what are the critical skills that you need to have as someone who is starting out in business? And I think it goes back exactly to what you said, Kemi. Um, it's, it's important if you're going to be going into a space, particularly one of business, to understand what is driving you to that particular product, service, or to even be in business um, to begin with. And if you don't know that, if you don't have a passion for it, it becomes very difficult for you to get up every day mm. and work on that business. Um, let's face it, being in business is hard. Hard, not because it's um, too complicated to figure out. I think anyone can be successful in business, but it's hard because there isn't a charted path um, for most businesses that you're looking to um, undertake. You know, there are how to's out there, but, you know, it's always going to be unique and mm -hmm. um, personalized to you. So now you've got to figure out a way to make it in business. And if you don't have a passion for it, it's going to be difficult for you to get up every day and put the work that's necessary to get it done. Um, mm. So that being a re prerequisite, you know, just a passion. I think another thing is you got to have a vision. And that a lot of people probably bypass the step. You know, a lot of people think about, I want to be in business. I want to make a lot of money. But you don't have a vision really for what that looks like. Um, and when I talk about vision, you've got to be able to really create a picture for what that future business could be. How many people am I servicing? You know, where are the geographic locations that I'm, I'm establishing this business in? What does my team look like? What are the critical skills that I need to bring to the table um, to really make up a differentiated team to really um, bring the promises of the service or the product that we're looking to take to market? So I think vision is so critical and that can be done through strategic planning, business plan. I mean, there's so many things that they encourage you to start with before you actually launch a business. And a lot of people just bypass this step because they're so excited um, and they don't really think about it. So the vision is a critical aspect and I would call that a, a skill because a lot of us um, are just moving without vision. Um, and when that happens, you're really just walking in darkness. So it's important to really have a vision. And then ultimately, when you have that vision, I think it's important to know how to operationalize the vision, which is another skill that's necessary. You know, um, some, sometimes we have the vision and then the vision scares us. You know, we're too scared to 
even get started because it just seems so big. Um, but Rome wasn't built in one day. Um, so you've got to figure out a way to put the initiatives in place. Um, think about the ta tactical operations on a day-to-day -day basis to really help you get to where you need to get to. And think about them in phases. You know, a lot of us have an end goal. You know, we have this huge vision of where we want to be. And we know where we are right now, but we don't know how to bridge the, the gap. Um, and that happens in phases. You got to think about the steps, the actions, the, the tactics to really help you get from point A to point B. Um, and that to me, once again, is a skill that can be honed over time, um, but you've got to constantly be thinking about how do I operationalize this vision that um, I've been given or that I have, and what are the initiatives um, within all aspects of business that I now need to start putting in place. So mm -hmm. ultimately, if you have a vision, if you have a sense for how to operationalize, now you've got to think about the various components of people, of, of business, the people management part of it. I mean, managing people is huge. Putting a team together to run a business is huge, particularly when that team is just a team of one. So now you've got to be your marketing person. You've got to be your salesperson. You've got to think about how to be um, that for all of your business as you're looking to add more folks onto the team. Financial management is huge, and I know we'll get back into that later. Um, mm -hmm. Marketing and branding, you know, operations, putting processes, systems in place so that you're constantly um, sort of, um, you know, being more efficient and leveraging your resources better so that you can um, continue to close that gap between where you are and where you need to be. So those are some of the skills that I think um, we can start with and happy to dive into each of those areas further. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hmm. A lot to, it's going into business is not, it's not child's play at all, right? So you have to have the passion that fuels you, that fuels that, um, fuels that vision that you will, that you need to have as a foundation. See it. I love what you said. Create a picture of what that future business is gonna look like. And we're all about making sure that we all have a vision, that a personal vision, and I believe that your business vision kind of ties nicely with that. How do you operationalize that vi vision? That's where a lot of people get stuck. What goes into that operationalization of that um, is also something very critical. And we can, you know, we can navigate through and you know, I'll be as we go, as we have these conversations today, one of the questions that comes to mind is. You know, so where do I get those skills? How do I build those skills? So I don't know if, if you want to, you know, give some, you know, insight into that or Bola, you can, you know, definitely, um, you know, answer that too, um, if you have some thoughts around it. Right. I can get started. Um, yes, it's definitely important for you to understand the skills necessary to run your business. But I think what's also important so that you don't psych yourself out, at least from starting, is understanding that there's a world, I mean, we have a global marketplace where you can tap mm -hmm. into your skills. Mm -hmm. um, they're foundational skills you need um, as the business owner, which is the vision. You need to have a sense of the operations. You need to be agile. Um, but in terms of all the others, particularly around marketing, you know, financial management, um, you know, you need some foundational skills, but if this is not your thing, Mm -hmm. You can go out and outsource it. And I actually encourage mm -hmm. people to, to, to do that. Um, a lot of folks get stuck trying to pick up degrees. And it, there's no wrong, mm -hmm. you know, I have plenty of degrees <laughs> as well. So I'm not saying <laughs> there's anything wrong with degrees. But sometimes it's just delaying you um, from getting started. Mm -hmm. There's no better teacher than getting started. You know, you, you can have yep. a PhD in business and not know the first thing about running a business. You learn right. from actually doing um, right. So my recommendation is pick up the skills as you go and not okay. necessarily wait to have all the skills before you get started. And uh, yes. the reason I mentioned the global marketplace is, you know, this day and age, particularly as we transition into a post-COVID world, there's mm -hmm. so much you need to know and do all the time to be relevant and get your brain out there. That, mm -hmm. that means that you have more to do than you have time. So you're going to necessarily have to leverage data, processes, system, 
technology, mm-hmm. you know, um, outsourcing to people who do these things well. And all that requires in terms of a skill for you is vision and agility. If you are agile mm-hmm. and you are comfortable with, you know, outsourcing to someone in India to help you build a financial model because you're not ready to spend 40 hours figuring out how to do it, they can probably turn it around for you in two hours. So wow. just be agile enough for you mm-hmm. to figure out what you absolutely need to build and right. the skills that you're willing to outsource. And I would say mm-hmm. how you differentiate between those is going back to passion and purpose. What do I get excited to do when it comes to this business? And if I love talking to people, I love business development, I love designing processes, do that. If you don't right. enjoy financial management, you don't enjoy digital um, you know, marketing and all of that, don't spend your time trying to do that, outsource that. And you can right. outsource at a fraction of the price and get great talent, um, especially in this day and age that there's no reason why you should not be doing that. So spend your time on meaningful activities that make sense right. for you and your gifts and then mm-hmm. outsource the rest. Beautiful, beautifully, beautifully articulated. I love that, you know, foundational, know those foundational skills, you know, enough to be dangerous and outsource the rest is what's yeah. coming to me. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Efe, um, I have a question for you. Agility came up as um, Bola was talking um, and sharing her amazing insights. You know, so COVID, post-COVID, post-pandemic, whatever we want to call it, this period, this season that we have never seen before has taught us that we must be agile. We need to be flexible. We need to think differently. What got us to pre-COVID cannot get us post-COVID, if you know what I mean. And things that we are, we are in an era of constant change. Really, when I think about it, change is the only constant that we're experiencing right now. We're right in the middle of it. As business owners, as we think about our business strategies, as we think about our financial plans, how do we make sure that we have the right level of buffering that, you know, agility, you know, in our mindset, in our, you know, in our structure and our strategies to keep us, um, to keep us um, successful, to make ensure that we continue to thrive regardless of the change that is thrown our way. Okay. Thank you. So um, I think it all boils down to understanding your financials, which I would jump into, but I think before I get there, COVID, as you said, taught us, you know, how to be agile. I feel like those are most of the businesses that are still standing tall. But also what COVID highlighted was the need for most businesses to become a bit more conservative in their spend, right? Um, because things that, you know, to um, to Bola's point, um, things that, you know, firms would have generally outsourced. Um, it was time for most people, um, we worked with a lot of those businesses last year to start looking in, inward to say, you know, maybe last year I could spend $1,000 in marketing by having X do it here um, abroad or something, but now I can't, right? So we, you, have to, you have to start thinking about how do you um, conserve so that is where I definitely, to add to Bola's point, you know, businesses can also look, be creative about where they get the skills from. There are lots of information online. Um, there are lots of communities such as this that, you know, they could offer free X or free Y, right? Um, mm-hmm. Free coaches, take advantage of that. Or you, they say, attend a webinar, you get a chance to win a one-on-one with Bola, who knows, right? Take mm-hmm. advantage of that uh, because obviously as she grows and you grow with her, you can get to a point where like you're getting your whole entire company um, to work with her and it's paid, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's about thinking creatively about those points as well for your expenses. Now to your question in terms of understanding the numbers themselves, um, as you think through what your post-COVID financials look like, you have to also sit on a seat where you're projecting your, your, your income is being projected, your sales is being projected, the cost of production is being projected. In fact, I encourage every business to have all those um, budgetary projections at the beginning of the year. What will March look like? What will April look like? If you're looking at it right now and if a financial expert does it for you today and you look at it and you're seeing that April looks really ugly, 
it's time for you to like get back to the drawing board and say, okay, do I have to reduce cost of production in April? Do I need all this 20 full-time staff? Maybe I just need 10. Because when you can't foresee the danger, you just sit in it and allow it to happen. And if you see it, why can't you do what you can do to change that outlook now so that the business doesn't draw, um, sort of um, drive into the ground? So I think that that is something like most small businesses miss because the big firms do it. The big companies do it. The Fortune 500 does it, but you're looking at it like, yeah, I'm a small business. I just bake cakes. Like, why do I need it? Yeah, you need it because you don't want to go start using your savings mm -hmm. to be able to finance your business until your money is out. So understand what those numbers look like on a monthly basis and revisit mm. them at a quarterly basis and ask yourself the hard questions why did I make, why did I not make profit this month? What should mm -hmm. I have done better? What should I cut? Re-strategize. I mean, being a successful business owner, you have to be willing to move with the wind. If it pushes you west, okay, let's go west. But how can we make sure that we're comfortable when we're sitting west? If it pushes you mm -hmm. east, how do you make sure that you're comfortable sitting east, right? So those are the things. And other things that I feel like Companies don't also do the smaller companies that when I talk to most small entrepreneurs, they don't even understand their burn rates, right? Burn rate is basically, you know, how much is the um, company going to be spending in its supplies of cash over time, right? So if I have this cash, how much is it taking for me to burn it, right? So you would see people that could have maybe a million dollars in the bank today and then you know, six months, you're like, damn, I blew through that. Damn, like, how did mm. that happen? I only just mm. opened that little factory. But if you had understood how much the company is spending, is burning the cash it has in its, its bank account over time, that would also help you plan properly so that you don't hit um, that doom day. Another problem I also see is that people don't understand, you know, the rate at which the, comp the customers are leaving the comp I mean, customers are leaving the company, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have, like, I've seen people that had loyal customers until COVID. And then COVID happened. And they're like, oh, yeah, my business was, like, really reliant on, like, these five major customers, but they all ran away, right? Because of COVID. Okay, we mm -hmm. understand that. But on a regular basis how often are, com are customers leaving? What that does is that it allows you to also plan properly. It takes you back to your marketing strategy board so that you can understand, okay, if I, on the average, I lose three or four customers each month, what do I have to do to then get those customers, to bring them mm -hmm. back to the drawing board, to retain them? And as you're doing that, you also want to know what your customer acquisition cost is. I'm sure Bola, I, th I think I saw her buy your market and she, she's, she definitely will be able to speak more to this, right? Like how much does it cost you to acquire uh, more customer over time? Is it lower? Is it higher? When you're doing, and it's, I know it may sound like complex, but it's not. When you do your Instagram ad, right? You're spending $5 a day, $10 a day. Fine, you have this, your funnel. People coming through the funnel. How much is it costing you per mm. customer? And then you look at that dashboard in the back to say, okay, it cost me 25 cents to bring this customer in. And over time, maybe this customer is spending $5,000. Like you have to be able to do those math to be able to understand um, where you are and where you're going. So small business owners, your numbers are very important. The big companies do it. And that is why they build all the scalable business and legacy businesses. And guess what? Most of us who are running small businesses, because we're not thinking that way, we're just waking mm -hmm. up one morning, running a business, not understanding our numbers. And then the next day we're like, oh yeah, that head business, girl, it didn't work out. Um, I think I'm going to do like skincare business. And then you mm -hmm. start six months, it shuts down. Yeah, I think I'm going to do teeth whitening. And then you go around calling yourself a serial entrepreneur. My dear, that is not what a serial entrepreneur is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, you know, maybe we need to look ourselves in the mirror, right? And say, hey, you know, what are we really running, right? Are we running a business or are we just trying new things every day because one thing didn't work? Thank you so much for those amazing insights. Um, what I might, you know, as you were talking, I'm just thinking, hmm, you know, um, the level of attention to detail that one needs for a business is serious business in itself for you to be able to really be successful. And I love what you said. 
the big businesses, organizations, big organizations look at the numbers regularly. In fact, on, yeah, and we, if you want to be big, if you want to be more than a small business, then you need to focus on that. Awesome. I am going to just pivot just really quick. We'll talk about mindset for a moment. And Bola, I'd like to just tap into your, um, you know, into your thinking for a bit there. And um, I know there are a couple of questions that are already coming in. So I want to encourage the audience if you can, please, if you do have any questions, please post it in chat, either on YouTube or on Zoom. I will be going into the um, audience questions in a bit. But um, Bola, can you just give some insight into uh, your thoughts around mindset? What, what does mindset have to do with this whole business, you know, entrepreneurship, starting a business, running a business? How important is it and what kind of mindset is it, is it critical for us to have to be successful in business? Yeah, no, that's um, that's a great question. And I love everything F.A. said. And, you know, I think it starts to touch on the mindset. Um, you mm -hmm. know, the reason big companies um, are big, as she said, is because they're willing to do what is necessary to be successful. So what essentially that means is they have a success mindset. Um, when you have a mindset that is going to require you to do what's necessary to be successful, then it then means that if the marketplace is calling for you to be agile, that's what you're going to bring to the table. If it's calling for you to be more technical in terms of certain aspects of your business, that's what you're going to do to, to do that. If it's calling for you to analyze your numbers, um, as Ate was saying, you're going to solve for that. So it's 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 a mindset where you do what is necessary to get to where you need to get to. Mm. A lot of people stay stuck um, in the name of either keeping it real, meaning, well, this is who I am, and you know, this is what I prefer to do. And a lot of times, you don't necessarily understand that what has gotten you where you are right now is not mm. going to be what gets you to where you need to go. So when it comes to mm -hmm. mindset, you need to be studying the folks in the space that you need to get to, that you want to get to, and you need to then assess for yourself, what is the gap between what these folks are doing, what these businesses look like, mm -hmm. and where I am right now, what I'm doing, and what I should be doing. So when you do that assessment for yourself, you realize that, yes, of course, there is a gap. So number one, mm -hmm. my mindset to be able to then build that gap, bridge that gap needs to change quickly. And what that means is you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. In mm. order for you to pick up new skills, in order for you to bridge the gap, you've got to be comfortable with really just not knowing. A lot mm. of us go into business wanting to do what we know. Now, the product and the service that you're providing, you may be an expert there, but you're not an expert in running a business because you've never done it before. So to just assume that it will just come naturally and everything will just flow is um, it is a mistake, right? And, mm. and you should not feel like you're doing something wrong by just um, accepting the fact that you don't know. You've never done it before. There's nothing wrong with um, doing what's necessary to gain that skills um, to, to really get your business to be successful. So I think success mindset is about embracing what is necessary to bridge the gap between where you are right now, which is just starting a business and where you need to get to. So in order to do that, I think success mindset is a can do. You know, I don't know it right now, but that doesn't mean that I can't do it. So if I have a destination in mind in terms of what I want to do, and I have a plan because I've done my, my vision board for my, for my business, I have a clear vision for where I want to get to. Now you've got to think about, well, you know, anything else that I've always had to do, be it the degrees that you have, be it, um, you know, the, the, the skill to, to become a wife or whatever it is that you've done before, you've studied it enough and you've been successful at doing it. So there's nothing that says that you can't be successful in business. You've just got to have that can do attitude to do it. And then ultimately, you've then got to put a plan for how to acquire those new skills. Um, you know, what is the plan? How do I follow through? How do I examine along the way? How am I measuring myself? 
Um, I love the, the um, focus on the metrics that um, F.A. talked about, um, because even for our clients, we talk about the nine critical metrics you should constantly be tracking for your business. You know, it all goes from, you know, qualified leads per month. How many qualified leads am I getting to my client conversion rate, to my gross margin, you know, to uh, resource reutilization, all of those things. But that's not something you would do naturally as a regular person if you're not in business. But now, in order for you to be successful, um, have a can-do attitude about getting comfortable with numbers, even if you're not naturally comfortable with numbers. So it's ultimately, you know, opening up, assessing for yourself, where am I? What do I need to do to get to where I need to get to? And how willing am I to pick up the skills and do what's necessary to get there? And that all has to do with mindset shift. It has mm -hmm. to do with positivity. It has to do with um, uh, uh, um, having a success mindset. Because the, mm -hmm. the minute you realize you know, what's ahead of you, a lot of times people get scared. Well, I can't do mm -hmm. that. That's not naturally what I do. But if you have a mm -hmm. can-do attitude, which is important, then it just allows you to either pick up the skills for yourself or go where necessary to build the network or tap into the resources that will allow for you to get there. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, um, as, as you were talking there, my, you know, as you know, as the, we are kingdom minded women, right? And it you know, talks about having that can do spirit, the scripture, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me just comes to mind. You know, as we think about this, as we run our businesses, especially in alignment with what God has placed in our hearts, this is, the, we are, a, we are at an advantage really, because we have the spirit of God helping us in that arena. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go to one of the audience questions that came in. I'm looking at the chat now from Titi. She says, are there technological tools that you would recommend to provide templates, to expand your vision, to develop strategy and operations? Again, are there technical techn technological tools out there that you would recommend to, pr to provide help with expanding your vision, developing your strategy and your operations? So, um, um, yeah, so there, there are, um, like if you Google the business model canvas, right? They're all over online. Um, if you looked at um, QuickBooks, because we're in the US, or I had to sort of switch my mm -hmm. mind from a little bit because I'm used to talking about Africa products. So US um, QuickBooks, if you're in Africa, you can look at Wave. And I think there's another common mm -hmm. manager because I know I saw some ladies from Lagos um, for like finance um, to help you manage your invoices, billing and those things are also lifesavers because rather than you chasing a customer, it automatically sends it to them and then, you know, they make payments. So it makes it easier on you. Um, but mm -hmm. For your strategy, I, I definitely would encourage each woman in this room to sort of go through her um, business model, Canva, write it down, think through it. But as you look at those tools, um, there's, there is a difference between, okay, these tools are here to help me and going to something that Bala sort of touched upon was also understanding how they work, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm sure some of us have gone to some tax, um, like TurboTax and stuff like that, like filled in all the stuff, put the wrong things at the right place or the right things in the wrong place. And then it spits out something and you're like, oops, but the government tells me, I, oh, what happened, right? So even when you're using these tools, take a step back, take the time, if not you, but maybe somebody who is more aligned with maybe a more financial person in your organization or somebody who just enjoys Instagram or whatever it is, depending on what that tool is. I think it's good for the person to also spend some time to really understand this tool so that you're putting the right things where they place, because where they should be, um, rather than going through a whole year using one of those financial accounting software. And then at the end of the year, you find out that everything was put in the wrong place. And this is something that actually happened mm -hmm. to one of the women we helped. And we basically had to go back and like reorganize everything and start it over to be able to do her 2020 financial statements. So use the tools, but also really understand the tools you're using. Right, right, right. That's very, yeah. very helpful. Go ahead, sorry, Bob. And just quickly, I, I wanna say different industries, different sectors have different tools that may even make more sense for your business. Mm. So a lot of times people hear 
you know, someone using a specific tool and yeah, right. they just want to use it for their business. It may work, but, you know, to FA's point, it just may not be, um, you know, optimal for your business, right? And once again, we're looking to find flow. You want to go with the flow when your business as much as possible. So if your industry is using specific tools, specific enterprise management, you know, systems or whatever it is, look and study what those are. And um, because if, if, if these tools are predominant in that industry, it's, be, it's for a specific reason. So don't try to reinvent the wheel if you don't need to, specifically around tools, systems, processes, you know, do the research, see what's working for others that you're looking to emulate, you know, with your business um, as an entrepreneur yourself and leverage what they've done um, as it makes sense for your business model. And no, Bella, you, br you bring up a great point as you were talking, um, something popped in my head, which is, you know, I know someone may ask, but I don't know other people in my industry, right? Like maybe I'm in the hair business and okay, ladies, I love hair. So I keep talking about hair. So please pardon me. Uh, maybe I'm in the fashion industry. Let's use something else, right? Even if you don't have those networks or those friends around you, guess what? You too. YouTube is a great resource. So just Google maybe that industry and maybe put financial accounting software and see the reviews, right? Those things are invaluable because if you want maybe 20 reviews or somebody who does something similar to you using a particular product, that would also help you decide on what is best for you. Right, right. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow. Um, tools, tools, tools. So you've heard it, ladies. Um, there, you know, you need to customize, think through the kind of tools that, you know, you need, a custom, align, think through it, make sure that you understand it so that you make sure that you're using the right tools for what you really need. Um, again, if you have questions, ladies, please, please post your questions. We, you know, this is your opportunity. Um, I don't know, um, team, if there are any questions on YouTube, um, let me know so I can um, ask the questions. Um, on here. So I'm going to go a little bit, I'm going to go into just a different perspective. So I want to ask both of you. So I'll start with you, Bola. Tell me what are those as a, as a business owner and as a, you know, um, business strategist, what are those daily habits, you know, or daily, what are those things that you do on a daily basis that keeps you going as a business owner? Are there some, you know, and um, if a please be ready to answer your that question too. I just want to um, share that uh, to hear from you. Just taking it to a personal level, what do you do um, to keep you going? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Habits to me are like um, you know sort of that hidden ingredient that people mm -hmm. don't really talk about when it comes to growth. And when you're looking to start and build a business. Um, you're going to have to necessarily grow. Um, so finding a way to, you know, develop the habits that are going to make sense for the journey is something that you need to spend some time thinking about. You know, mm -hmm. my word for this year and every year I pick a word to really focus on to really help drive me as an individual, but also maybe even my business or whatever the growth areas that I'm looking for. Um, but my word for this year is discipline, right? I want to be more disciplined mm -hmm. in the various spaces that I'm walking in. And as a result, I really needed to, you know, get my habits right. So, mm -hmm. and in the first thing is I want to have a disciplined schedule, which then means I need to have a routine. So when I get up every day, there's certain things that I do from the morning to a specific period of time during the day. And then I may have some availability on my schedule to do whatever makes sense as time comes. And then I fall back into more routine in the evening time more specifically around my family, um, because as you're building a business, you know, there's so much going on all the time. You know, the secret is your to-do list will never get done. It, you just can mm -hmm. never get rid of the to-do list. Thank you. Grow, <laughs> right? So if you are determined to just sit at your desk until you finish your to-do list, then you ultimately will neglect important areas of your life, like your family, your social life, mm -hmm. your spiritual life your physical um, well-being, et cetera. Um, so when it comes to, you know, habits, I think just really understand your routine, you know, put a routine together that makes sense, you know, get up in the morning, pray, meditate, 
do some physical activities as it makes sense with your with your children or loved ones. You know, have a vision in session or strategy session with your team um, at a specific time. You know, do an assessment of your numbers. What are the metrics looking like? Respond, respond to your clients, um, you know, within a specific period of time. Um, you know, just really have a schedule that makes sense for the things that you're looking to accomplish. Um, but ultimately, I think a routine is so key um, mm -hmm. to have in place. Another reason why um, routine is important, not only does it allow for you to address all the critical parts of your life that you need not neglect, but we all know that anytime you're coming up with a solution to something the first time, um, that is where the biggest heavy lifting is, right? So you wanna think about something once or twice and then put a process around it so that you don't have to think about it every single time. The problem with us when we don't have a routine is every time you're met with a situation, now you've got to come up with a customized solution for it as opposed to tapping into a process. When you have a routine, it allows for you to conserve your mental, um, you know, just resources to really address the innovative needs of your organization, to address your client um, issues um, because you're not burning excess energy unnecessarily around something that you could easily put a process around. Um, so I, I think game-changing habits around discipline, having a routine, having a schedule are all things that are important for you to really incorporate into your life as a business owner. And then ultimately, you've got to track, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, we have the vision right, but then we don't get the operationalizing right. We get the operationalizing right, but we don't have the routine or the schedule right. And then maybe you have that, but then you're not tracking. You need to really complete that whole process in order for you to really guarantee um, forward progression. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why it's important to track what you're doing is because, you know, to FS4, you want to know, you know, are things about to, you know, hit the fan in April? If so, how do I need to pivot? You know, mm -hmm. so what are the key metrics that make sense for what I'm doing? How am I tracking to make sure that I'm assessing for what's working, what's not working, um, and how can I make changes on the go to better tweak um, the work that I'm doing? And what's great about tracking is you also see where your greatest returns on investment are coming. Um, so mm -hmm. if you're doing a lot on social media and you're spending this amount of time and money and you're getting a bunch of clients, but not getting as much return on Facebook, now you know where you need to tweak your efforts to um, put more time in on um, and put more effort on. So ultimately, um, another great habit, like I said, is um, you know just tracking to make sure that you're not just doing things without having um, data-driven insights to guide you along the way. Beautiful, beautiful. Make sure that you have you have routines, build some discipline around making sure you have a schedule, track, operationalize, you know, one without the other will not get you anywhere. <laughs> You'll be missing something. Beautiful. Thank you. If it, do you want to share sure, some yeah. of your habits so we can, yeah, no, you, we can learn from you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, no, happy to. Mine is not as elaborate. I'm like, well, we need a session, but uh, <laughs> mine is not a, I think for me, it's goal tracking, right? I'm sure people can mm -hmm. pick up that I'm big on that, like setting out goals, um, understanding what you want to accomplish each month, each day, you know, what does success look like for you um, and being able to be flexible, to be able to amend that um, should it not work. So I think that is important because I feel like those goals allow you to understand where you're going, right? Because it's a purposeful journey where you're going and then, you know, um, be able to adjust. I think the second thing I would say is perseverance. I'm big on that mm. one because I don't know. I've had an interesting life. You know, I have to knock on one door 10 times before they even peek to look at me and say, oh, you're there. Mm. Um, mm. So I think it's important, right? Because that is, it also adds color to your story and helps you build even stronger. But it's very, very important um, for you as an entrepreneur to have that skill, build that skill, um, try to be patient, try to keep going even when everything looks um like it's going to be falling apart, um, be disciplined in your process, right? So, you know, if you've agreed to do X, Y, and Z in a business, or you've agreed that, you know, every morning, this is what I would do. Obviously, yes, you have to be agile, but also you have to be disciplined because I don't know any successful business owner 
<laughs> that didn't have some sort of discipline, like self-discipline, you know, mm -hmm. you're not Put in, you're not commingling your personal assets with your business assets. You're keeping it separate. You want to go on that vacation to Dubai with your friends. You paid yourself a salary, but you're like, hmm, but the business account has, you know, an extra 2 million Kenyan shillings. Maybe I should like just dip into that, right? Um, forgetting that it's what you want to be able to use to pay salaries. And then the mm. next one, you're looking at your employees, they're looking at you and you're staring at each other, being like, girl, you know what happened? No, <laughs> right? But no, but yeah. this happened where we laugh about it, but they actually do happen. So you have to have that discipline. But at least for me, most importantly, what is so uh, more personal to me is listening to God. Mm. Um there is no one day that I don't wake up and ask him to guide me in mm -hmm. the decisions I'm about to make that day. But most mm -hmm. importantly, allowing me to listen. Because some of, some of the time we ask for guidance, you know, show me, da, 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 and he puts it in front of you and you're like, nah, that, you know, that's going to be difficult though. Um, I'm already here, so I could as well do this quick fix, right? Mm -hmm. But I try to be guided such that I don't see the end of the, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel mm. in that moment, but I do it in faith. And this is, this is a conversation that Ani and I have, we've had a lot, you know, mm. I do it in faith. And the funny thing is that when the outcome comes, like I've literally had my staff ask me, Effie, how did you know this was going to happen? Because you told us to do this. And we thought, cause they're like, why are we doing this sometimes? And I said, I don't mm. know. I, I, I wouldn't like to them. I don't know, but I think there's the right way to do it. And we do it. And later on, they're like, how did you know we would need the stuff? Like if mm. we didn't do it like this, we would have made up stuff. And it's really just listening and trying to be guided and know that whatever you're doing, you're not doing it just for you. God brought us all here for a purpose, right? So even mm -hmm. if you start that business that fails and you start another one, there is a purpose you're here to serve. And it's not you that is dictating to him what that purpose is, right? It's him that knows why he brought you here, why he has given you the spirit you have, why he has given you the characteristics that you have because he's preparing you for something. So I find that those of us that struggle, you know, you see people that are not good at tech, but they're like, ah, you know, but tech, if I did tech, I'll make 500,000 US a year. I have to do it. But you're forcing yourself into a space that he has not made for you. Mm -hmm. And then you're the one who would go home and cry that you're not successful. Whereas if you really did what he wanted you to do, you would easily mm -hmm. find success there and maybe mm -hmm. even make more, but you are following the crowd. So that is my own personal touch. There's no single day that I wake up that I do not ask to be guided for one, but also to know, you know, that he's speaking to me so I can listen and act. And even when I don't know where that is taking me to, I don't care. I just keep it. I just do it. Well, you just shared with us the secret sauce, right? <laughs> Thank you. And <laughs> I love it. It's, it's not just many of many times we pray when, uh, but you just said something that was just so profound. Listen, act, obey. You know, and I just love that because, you know, at the end of the day, we can do all the stuff we've just talked about. But if we don't go back to the person that really put us on that assignment, because our businesses really, they're suppo they are supposed to be the assignments from God that God has given us. Right. And so I love, you know, all what you said. I didn't have to repeat it, but um, beautiful. Thank you so much. We do have actually there's a question specific to you. Here, let me just make sure I read it. What are the some of the things potential investors look for in a business strategic plan or financial performance to make them feel comfortable to invest? What do potential investors look in a strategic plan or financial performance to make them feel comfortable to invest? High level stuff. We've talked about financial. That's a big one. Because no matter, you know, impact investors, whatever they call themselves, as long as it's not aid and grant money, they are looking to make some money from that business, right? They're not mm -hmm. looking to invest a million dollars in you and then you come two years from now and tell them, oh, by the way, um, about that, <laughs> the business, mm -hmm. 
right? So they mm-hmm. want some sort of returns, be it 2X, be it 3X, be it 4X. They are looking for those returns. So you have to know your numbers. Your numbers in the books have to be, have to be solid. Um, and even if they are not solid, you have to be honest to tell them, you know, why it's not. Explain to them because integrity goes a long way. It's such a small community. You can't imagine, like, in fact, this morning, I was having a conversation with this lady and she's like, oh, I stuck my product here. We're having trouble, you know, restocking there. And I'm like, oh, that's my friend. I'll send her a text message, right? It's, it's such a small community that you're talking to one person, but that person probably knows half of the people you're talking to. The investment community is so small. So I would say definitely um, be ethical in your approach. Um, financials, mm. understanding your product, again, goes back to that point, because if the, if you don't understand the product, there's no way you can convince the investor to understand. So they're also looking at this document from the perspective of, do, do I even understand what this person is trying to sell? So mm-hmm. I always tell people, when you do your pitch deck um, or your deck in general, write it as though you're writing it for your five-year-old niece or nephew. They should be able to understand because, especially the tech folks, they get super excited. They're doing like API, all those fancy words. I'm like, okay, great. We know you went to school and we know you get, went to nice schools and most of us maybe did it. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to read the stuff and understand it and understand the business model. So simplicity in explaining that product, what it does helps. Um, they're also looking for customer, um, the, the customer attraction to your product. Like our people mm-hmm. actually using it. Oh, besides your family, friends, because we know that your family would... Uh, most families would try to support you and buy that little soap you made, right? right. But, you know, how big is that uh, your customer base and what are the orders looking like? And have they grown over time? Are we starting from, you know, zero to 2,000 in three months? Or are we going from 2,000 to 500 in three months, right? Zero to 2,000 looks more scary, but it shows a lot of growth, right? Um, when it's just a 500, um, 500 people difference in a short in a long period of time, it doesn't um, build a good story. Um, your team is also as important. Um, well, that's one of the big questions I actually ask, like mm-hmm. how long have you guys been together? How did you guys know each other? Um, mm-hmm. To understand the connection because a lot of time, great businesses fall apart because the partners can not get along. Um, mm-hmm. I went to, and it's, it's sad because I went to the store, there's a product I loved. I went there, I said, oh, you know, do you guys still have it? And the lady was like, no, we don't. I was like, oh my God, that was such a good product. And had mm. response, like, you know, the, the partners fell apart. Um, they decided to go separate ways and individually went to go create different products, right? Mm. Um, it's a big thing. I have seen that way too many times um, because what that tells me is that if I came to your company and invest an X amount, um, and if it's a team that doesn't work well together or you guys every Wednesday is like cat fight day, let's see who's weak, we can pull out faster, you know, mm-hmm. and, and who throws the highest punch. The problem that we you would face there is that the investor may be investing into an empty shell and mm-hmm. they don't want that. Um, so I think those are, are generally the big points, you know, understanding the market, how big the market is, understanding your business model. I've asked people, explain to me your business model and they really can't. Um, that's mm-hmm. a big no, no. You have to be able to explain that and obviously your projections and make sure they are realistic. I've seen people making projections that I feel like even if in 20 years, we'll still be looking and being like, okay, do we need another 50 years to get to this projection, right? Because yes, you want to get the investors to be attracted to your business, but at the same time, you want to be realistic and investors can see mm-hmm. through it. So if it's mm-hmm. not realistic, they also catch it at the same time. So you know, don't think like you're trying to fool anyone. Right. Beautiful. Oh my God, that was loaded. I hope you all were taking copious notes. Thank God we have the recording, you know, the recordings. I, you know, I know I see some of our, you know, we, we actually just had a business pitch competition last year during our conference. And I see some of our winners actually, or at least one of them who is in the audience, and I'm sure she's taking copious notes here. Um, this is one that I'm definitely going to recommend for them, you know, as they think about their business. I am super, I just, this, this has been so, so amazing. Um, you know, just to, it, just a couple of quick questions for both of you. Favorite author, Bola, favorite author. We want to know what you read. 
Are you there? Sorry, sorry, I didn't realize I was on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just just saying, a quick one. <laughs> okay, so I would say if you haven't read um, 10x, you know, Grant Cardone, um, I don't know if he's my favorite author, but I just recently just, um, you know, started implementing um, what I read in there. But um, Grant Cardone, I think, has a lot of ideas about how to 10x you know, yourself from where you are mm. right now to where you need to be. And, you know, as we talk about mindset shift, you know, when you think about doing whatever is necessary, a lot of people fall short in terms of right. what's necessary. You know, right. you're trying to plan your path for how to get to where you need to get to. And a lot of times people are just looking for the fastest way to get there. And when you fall short of that, you get disappointed and then you give up. Um, but he's one that just talks about 10 x your actions. If you think it's going to take you a year to get there, act as if it's going to take you 10 years to get there and then 10 x everything you need to do. Mm, if, you need to learn, if you need to know one person in the industry to figure out how to be successful or take your product to the next level, put a plan in place to identify 10 strong people who are going to get there. So mm. number one, create a reasonable plan and then 10 x it. So what that means, what you know, when you're 10xing your activities, your sales projections, your expense projections, and all of that is you are building 10x the buffer. And uh, when mm. you're doing that, it almost guarantees success, right? Uh, mm. Because a lot of times that we fall short in our planning. Um, so if you 10x it, then hopefully you get closer you get there. to the reality that you haven't um, thought about in terms of you know, the unexpected no's, you know, as they right. said, I had to knock on 10 doors before someone would even check if I'm there. A lot of times we're just saying, okay, I'm just going to go knock on this person's door. They'll answer. I'm going to tell them about my product. They'll buy it. I'm going to get funding. And here we go. It's great. Right. You know, um, when we know that's just not the case. So right. really right. the next thing, your actions, your rejections, everything that's necessary so that you can really put together a plan to get you closer um, to where you need to go. So check out Green Court. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as you do that, um, you know, so I love it. I love, I love it. I haven't heard of him. So I'm going to yeah. go dig in. If a, your favorite author, and brother, as you're, you know, yes. if you can type in how folks can contact you in chat, just in the interest of time, that would be great. Your social media yeah, I think connects and all that. I'm if finishing they, a book I'm reading um, currently. The secret oh. is that I actually don't read a lot of books because between okay. work and everything going on with my nonprofit, there is no time. But I'm actually reading a book by a friend um, called Risk and Return. Mm. And he takes us through his story, um, you know, working in corporate America here, um, going through to set up a business in Africa, what that meant. And he actually is one of the managing partners at one of the um, African private equity firms. Um, so he's also an investor. So he just walks us through, you know, his um, risk and the returns mm -hmm. he got out of it, um, migrating and doing all the great work he's doing in Africa. All right, what's his name? His Benefit. name is Yummy, um, Y-O-M-I, and his last name is Jebby We. Jeb me B one um J E M I B E W O N. Right. And we'll look for him. All right. I hope you all caught that. That sounds like a very interesting read. I just want to say thank you to both of you. Um, if you can please put your contacts in um, the chat, that will be awesome. And I have totally thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I hope you did too. I'm going to hand over to Ani, who is going to close us out with a few announcements. But, you know, um, I'm sure the audience thoroughly enjoyed this too. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Ani, over to you. Wow, that was thrilling, exhilarating. That was just awesome. Um, I mean, people pay Harvard Business School for these insights. Know your why, track the numbers, adapt. Thank you guys so much for, for just pouring out um, to us today. I've learned so much and they, they actually were practical and they were insightful. So ticked all the boxes. Um, can we have the uh, slides up please? So that I can then go through, through the announcements. That's okay. Cause I think the announcements, uh, we have upcoming events 
Um, so the next webinar will be in April. Again, we have this every month, as you know. Um, I think the slides are coming up. Let's go. Oh, we do have a giveaway. Let's go with the giveaway first. So um, as I mentioned at the beginning, right, we at EPR, we're all about connecting. We're all about empowering. Iron sharpens iron, as you will know. So we do have a Facebook community and we're going to give price, a price, a price to, we're going to look at the top first 50 people that register. I think the link is being shared on, on the chat. So please connect with us on Facebook. We want to be able to build a community of women where we just work together, be connected, develop each other, empower each other. That would, that, that's really our goal. So please make sure you are on it and you will get a prize. I believe in the next 24 hours, you will know if you have been selected as a winner. Thank you. I see the link is up there. The next slide. Yes, so our upcoming events. Yes, we are still in the fabulous month of March, International Women's Day, International Women's Month, if you want to call it that. Um, and we have been having a series of um, leadership reflections along the lines of the theme, Choose to Challenge. So we've had various really good speakers um, sharing their nuggets, five to 10 minutes video clips on choosing to challenge in their respective um, industries. So follow us on YouTube, our website. Um, you just will continue with those, those video uh, messages. Uh, our next webinar, um, April 17th, please save the date. We will confirm the topic closer to time, but please just save the date, diarize it right now. And uh, 2021 inspiring conversation seasons uh, kick off, is gonna kick off towards the end of, of April. Um, next slide. We do have a di business directory, which for us is a repository uh, of businesses. So please sign up, sign up your business there. It's a good way to get to know about other businesses and other businesses can also get to know about you. Let's help each other. Let's connect it with each other. Let's really make sure this network um, really does become that. Uh, next slide. And um, there are other ways to engage with us, to interact with us. Uh, Command the week, we do every Monday morning. It's two, well, yeah, midnight here, um, Eastern Standard Time, 4 a.m. Um, British time and 5 a.m. West African time. You don't want to miss this. Command the week, it's literally that. You command your week. So imagine doing this for 52 times in a year, the kind of year you'll have, four times in a month, the kind of month you'll have. So do join us on YouTube, Instagram, um, follow us on our handles. And every Saturday we do have what we call the, we call it the call. <laughs> um, prayer meeting, we're praying for the nations, we're praying for the body of Christ. You wanna connect uh, with us. And if you wanna partner with us, um, financially support all our initiatives, please do, please do that. Uh, PayPal, as well as the portal. Um, next slide. Um, and I believe there will be a, link going up we really do want feedback we want to know what topics you want us to feature we want to know how you found today we want to know what you want us to change start doing stop doing continue doing please feedback is very very important to us i don't know if that is going up now or if the link will be shared later i, I can't see anything on okay. my screen a feedback so just a quick one so if, so once we close the webinar Okay. And feedback, the feedback form will actually come up in Zoom. So if you can just take a moment and just give us some quick feedback, just a few questions. It can't take you more than a couple of minutes. We really need this information to help inform how we design going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Kemi. Thank you. I think that's it, right? So thank you very much. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And I believe maybe the Telegram link, if you want to join us on that channel as well um you can um but yeah we look forward to it's your first time we look forward to to connecting connecting with you thank you everyone i believe that's it it's been fantastic Hola. thank you so much <laughs> thank you Ani. thank you everyone thank you to our awesome audience yay great great thank job everyone um have a wonderful saturday and rest of the weekend there and follow us Make sure the recording will be out there if you want to listen to this again. So um, take a look at it. Thanks. Thanks, Bala. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.
Bye-bye.